I don't know how to start this. Um, I'm Erica and I don't know what I'm doing, but I wanted to share the experience I've been having at the start of 2021 and with that experience is lots of books so i'm gonna go through them and i hope you enjoy so i have my i have a list of all the books that i've read this year some of them are audiobooks some of them are books that I got from the library. So I don't have all the physical books, but the ones that I do have, I'll show you. So the first book that I started at the end of 2020 with and finished in 2021, I actually had that one, is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. First, I said I wasn't gonna watch the movie until I read the book and then I watched the movie and I was like, well, I wanna read the book now. And it was just a fun read. I found it at the thrift store, that's why I got it. I gave it. A four out of five it was just fun made me want to go to Italy maybe want to go travel the world and explore my spirituality it was just a good fun read the next book that I read is actually a book that I found in the thrift store I didn't know anything about it but it looked interesting so I picked it up and that is Bone by Faye May Ng and this is about a family in the heart of San Francisco Chinatown and it talks about um, just the family dynamic. Also, one of the sisters um, tragically died. So it kind of talks about how her sister's dealing with it, her family story. Um, I gave this a I gave this a three out of five because it was so short. I felt like I didn't really get to know the characters, so I wasn't entirely invested. But I have three sisters of my own, so reading through that tragedy definitely I felt a connection to because I couldn't imagine losing a sister. Yeah, it was just an, it was a pretty easy read, um, and there was a lot of great imagery in this book. I have to say. So that was the second one. Oh, I actually have this one. Hold on, I have to look at it. Oh my god, I almost fell off the chair. The next book that I read was Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. Um, I actually found this at the thrift store and I remember the end of 2020, everyone was reading this book. And so I picked it up because it's in such great condition. So this is a book about following three different women in their stories, Lena, Sloan, and maggie i believe and it talks about relationships love um, dynamics of relationships successful relationships and this was a hard one to get into because it was kind of like a fiction and a non-fiction and you go why didn't you do that right now so <laughs> This is a hard one to get into because it was fiction in the sense that that's how it was written, but it was the stories of real women. Um, so they changed all the names and all the details so it's unidentifiable, but the stories stay true. So it was really interesting to read because um, I kept reminding myself like these are three real women that experience these things. I gave this a three out of five, I believe. Yeah, this was just kind of hard for me to get into, but the commentary on women in society, their expectations, how it differs from the expectations of men was really, really good. Um, it was just kind of hard to read, especially since it was three separate stories, but it was still really good. I appreciate the author and how much effort she put in to get an accurate telling of these stories. The next book that I read was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I was dying to read this book. I just started watching all of these people's videos about their 2020 wrap ups and this was in almost everyone's wrap up. So I actually started this as an audiobook, and then 
surprise surprise i found it at a thrift store so i ended up buying it and finished it by reading it i could not when i had the audiobook stop listening to it and then once i had the actual book put it down if you don't know about this book it's basically about um this futuristic world where oh i should i should just read the back but um this is 2044 where the reality sucks, but they have this oasis, which is this virtual reality that they go to for school, that they go to for everything. That's where they make their friends. They have their own avatars. And there is the creator of the oasis dies and he creates an Easter egg hunt for the rights to the oasis and his fortune. So everyone is going on all these adventures to try to find these keys that are going to get them to the to the final easter egg or to the easter egg and you follow anorak which is the first person to get the first key um which i don't know if that's a spoiler but i don't think it is anyway anorak is his avatar name wade is his real life name and it goes through his journey and the people that he meets along the way. And by the end, I could not put it down. Like I only had a, I wanna say like 10 chapters left. And I was like, I'm finishing this right now. And I, cause I need to know what happens. It was so, so good. This really jump started me back into reading because I remember that there's books like this that can keep me engaged throughout the whole thing. And yeah, this was, I feel like, a pivotal book in my reading life. So yeah, obviously I gave this a 5 out of 5. I don't, I don't think there's a question there. The next book that I read slash listened to um, was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I listened to this book on the app Libby. I heard about this app through Noelle Gallagher and I'm so grateful that she suggested it because I use it every day. That's how I listen to all my audiobooks. I don't have to worry about buying them. I can just borrow them from the library. Like I said with Ready Player One, I started it on audiobook, but then I finished it as a real book. So Little Fires Everywhere was my first audiobook all the way through. It was definitely an interesting experience because I'm used to reading the physical book, so it was definitely adjustment to listening to it. This one was really interesting. This one obviously came highly recommended. Since I'm used to reading the characters, it was definitely an adjustment to get a feel for where the story is going and get a handle on the storyline. But by the end, I actually really enjoyed the audiobook because you can hear the characters' voices and it actually kind of makes you feel more connected to them. This book follows the story of Nia Warren and her daughter Pearl that just moved to Shaker Heights. This is kind of a ritzy kind of town and Mia is actually an artist that doesn't work a nine to five, but Elena Richardson, who is her landlord, offers her a job working as their housekeeper. And throughout this relationship, Elena's kind of nosy into what Mia's life is and her story. And things kind of come to a head when there is a big disagreement in the town about um, this baby that has been adopted and from that Elena is kind of trying to figure out Mia's backstory, how she got there, who Pearl's dad is. You can kind of see a contrast between Rich in their own little bubble and Mia who has experienced a lot of tragedy in her life and kind of where those collide. I gave this book a 4 out of 5. I felt like I was kind of missing something at the end of the story. I didn't mind the ending. Maybe I was hoping for a little more drama, but it was still good overall and I definitely still would recommend it. The sixth book that I read in 2021 was Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. This was actually recommended to me by my therapist. I did not know how much I need this book until I finished this book. A lot of my friends and family and community are extroverted and sometimes as an introvert that can feel a little bit alienating. I'm trying to work on myself that 
being introverted doesn't mean I have to be ashamed about that fact or try to hide that fact and pretend to be extroverted, but actually I add a lot to my community by being introverted and the characteristics that come with that. So if you are an introvert and sometimes you feel like an alien, which is like how I feel, I highly recommend this book. This book described a lot of feelings that I did not know how to put into words and because of this I feel like I understand myself better and I actually can explain myself to others. I also told my husband that he has to read this book because it will give him a look into inside my brain and how I think about situations and how I feel about in social situations and things like that. So five out of five obviously highly recommend if you're an introvert. Also, if you're an extrovert and you are in a relationship with an introvert, highly recommend as well. The next book that I read was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Again, this was another book that I heard about through Noelle Gallagher. So The Hate You Give follows Star Carter, who's a 16 year old that kind of is living in two worlds. One is the fancy prep school in the suburbs that she attends and the other is the poor neighborhood that she lives in. And this conflict kind of comes to a head when her best friend Khalil is murdered by the police while she's in the car. She throughout the book is struggling between these two worlds and how to navigate them and how to live in both of them. I gave this book a four out of five. The audio book, highly recommend. The voice actor was incredible for this book. I felt so invested in the characters. I think I finished this in like two days. I just had it playing whenever I was doing anything. I'm also really excited for the sequel or prequel to this, which is Concrete Rose that just came out, which talks about Star's dad and his life and um, young adulthood in the neighborhood that Star and her family still lives in. The next book that I read was The Silent Patient. I was obsessed with this book. My friend Emily said, Erica, you need to read this. And I was like, okay, okay. I put it off a little bit, finally got it from the library and finished it in two days. Could not put it down. The twist at the end is incredible. So the basis of the story is this woman murders her husband. And after she murders him, she doesn't talk anymore so they sent her to a psych ward and throughout this book you're learning about her life you're leaning leading up to the very end where you find out what happened and it's such an easy read it's very straightforward five out of five could not put it down i highly recommend this book and like, I'm scared to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but it's so good. So please just, if you get any book from this video, it is a silent patient. It will get you out of your slump. It is suspenseful that you keep turning the page and the chapters are really short, which is very helpful because you just get through it so quickly. And the writing is so easy to read, but also very descriptive. So I gave that book five stars. The next book that I read was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, by Delia Owens, yeah. And I listened to this on an audiobook. This book follows a girl, the quote unquote swamp girl, who lives kind of on the outskirts of town, literally in a house by the swamp. Her family eventually all leaves and she's kind of there by herself. And it kind of talks about the stigma that she has in the in the city and what people think of her, how she experiences love and loss. So the book goes back and forth between when she's a kid and when she's like in her 20s, I think. And basically when she's in their 20s, this um, man who she went to school with is found dead and they're trying to figure out what happened. Was it an accident? Was it, um, a murder and all that stuff. So you're going back and forth from her as a 20 year old experiencing life and also her kind of in middle school. The book is slow. So it was really hard to get into. I wanna say like 
the second half to last quarter of the book, I was more invested because things start to twist and you're like, wait, what's happening? And you want to get to the end. The last chapter, the best chapter, the shock value, I literally was like, oh, gasped because I could not believe what happened. So it's slow to start, but by the end I was invested. So I gave this book a three out of five. The most recent book that I finished was On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. And I feel like I have a little bit of a controversial opinion about this book. As a little background, I was not an English major. I was far from that. I was a math major of my undergrad. I got my master's in applied biostatistics. So literary devices, poetry, things like that just kind of go over my head. And especially since I'm just getting back into reading, I have even less of a grasp on those things. So I actually gave this book a three out of five. Now, the story was great. This young man is writing letters to his mom about their time together and how he's processing his childhood in his 20s and she can't even read. So he's not writing this like she's gonna read it. He's just kind of talking about his experience and how tragic it is. The story was good. Sometimes I was lost and I know that's me. Like I know that that's my problem. Majority of the imagery just went right over my head and also it jumps around a lot and I get very scatterbrained so I was so confused on what was happening. Kind of lost track of some of the characters but it was still a beautifully written book and a beautiful story. So I gave it a three out of five. I know that that's my problem and hopefully maybe down the road when I've read more books and I kind of have more of a handle on those things I'll read it again and you know I'll I'll see I'll see all the things everyone else is seeing. Just at the moment, I don't see it. Those are the books that I've completed. And I guess I just kind of want to talk about the books that I'm reading right now. So currently on audiobook, I'm listening to Normal People by Sally Rooney, right? Yeah, Normal People by Sally Rooney. I'm only like in the first like quarter of the book. So I don't really know too much but so far i really like marianne i'm into it i've heard mixed reviews about normal people um so i'm just kind of excited to see where the story's going the next book that i haven't started yet but i actually just got from the library because i've been on hold for a month is the hating game by sally thorne I haven't really got much into romance, but Noelle Gallagher, again, this is like one of her top books. So I was like, if I'm gonna try a romance book, this is the book to try. I'm excited to start this. I literally have no idea. I have no idea what this is about. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. The book that I'm reading right now is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I'm halfway through and I will finish this tonight. Things have picked up. Poor Rachel, you know, she is just struggling. She's been dealt a bad hand and she just seems to be digging herself a hole as she gets more involved in Megan and Scott's life. I'm scared to say anything about this book because I feel like it's full of spoilers. This woman, Rachel, takes a commuter train every single day and she always passes this house and looks at this couple who she calls Jess and Jason and she gets more involved in their lives than you could have ever expected from someone that just looks at your house from a train. So yeah, I'm halfway through. I will finish this tonight and I'm itching to figure out what role Rachel has played in this tragic situation. As I said before, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just like books and I found a new passion in them and I just wanna share that. 
whether it be to one person, zero people, I don't really care. I don't know anything about what books are supposed to be good, what good writing is like. I feel like I'm learning that as I go. As I was looking through all the books that I read this year, I realized I have a lot of three out of fives. And I think it's just because I haven't found what I like yet, but it's a journey and I have a lot of books on these shelves that I have not read yet. <laughs> this shelf is so unorganized. I, I do want to organize them. I am big into organizing, so maybe I can actually film that. I don't know. There's so many books on these shelves I have not read, have not touched, found them in a thrift store, bought them because I like the cover. I don't know. So yeah, I guess if you want to see me organize my bookshelves, <laughs> We could do that. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed me talking about these books. Maybe I'll do this again. Maybe this will literally be one video that I will never look at or share. But it was fun. And hopefully if I keep doing this, I get better because I need to be more prepared. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna go enjoy this spring afternoon and Maybe you'll see me later. Bye.